All right. Welcome to this week's episode of A Hot Mess with Jeff and Andrea. <laughs> no. Um, we're excited about what, what God has, has laid on our hearts. And, you know, and as I think about Sunday morning, I, I, I hope that we come here in a way it's like, it's not about what we can teach you. It's us sharing. I told you, I'm already a hot mess this morning. <laughs> but what God is teaching us. And everything in our heart that we share is, 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 you know, I just don't ever want anything to come across as, as a pointing fingers or you're not doing enough or you're not good enough. That, that's not what it's about. Okay, that's never what it's about. We want to challenge each of you to grow and walk and mature in our journey with him. And that's where he's, he's got us and what he's challenged us with um, this week. So let me just open us in prayer. Uh, Daddy, um, we just come before you this morning. Just opening our, our hearts, opening our hands, saying we're just your vessels and want to be used by you this morning. And Father, I just want each one here, Father, each one watching, Lord, to know the heart's desire that you have for them the way that you know them and the way that you want us to know you. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, and it's not about us. May everything we do be about you, glorifying you, and knowing you, and drawing near to you, and serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, did you have anything you want to add before I <laughs> go on? All right. Um, I think we want to kind of start. I think Gabrielle left us where we kind of finished that. We kind of want to pick up where we left off of, of last week. And, um, can you go, there should be Dave, um, a picture at the end. And Jason gave this gave this illustration at the end last week and he had he had the three guys up here. I think it was it was Jason and and Ryan and was Mike the other one up here? I can't remember. Mike up here. And they were standing in the chairs. And then we had Lucas, who was our Goliath. Now he has a giant complex, so we're trying to deal with it. You know? And then um, Finn was out here as David, little one looking looking at and Jason was talking about how how David wasn't focused on, on Goliath, but was God behind him, right? His focus was on God, and that's why he could do what he did in that situation, you know? And, um, and honestly, you know what? I, it's funny. I was, I was sitting by Katie last week, and, and Jason was like, what's the first thing that you think of when you think about David? And I said Bathsheba, <laughs> you know? And... But the interesting thing is, is with that is each one of us have a Bathsheba. Not, not in the sense of the way David did, not the way that he fell in that sin with her. And it might not even be sin is what we speak of, but, but what are the things that take our focus away from him? That step in the way from seeing what God is trying to do and what he tries to do through us, right? And so my wife, who's very good and what I love about her most, and I'm being honest, I'm not, I'm not going somewhere as, as a joke here, but, but I'm being honest, but, but what she cares most deeply about me is, is where I'm at in my walk with Jesus. And everything trying to use every situation, every scenario to point back to him. If I'm struggling, if I'm seeing things, if things haven't gone my way, trying to bring me back in that. And, um, you know, if our eyes are off him, you know, what are the things that get our eyes off of him? You know, can it be, you know, 
our job. It might be school. It could be sickness that's going on. It might be a deep, dark sin that we don't want people to know or, or a number of things. But can I tell you one thing for me that is one of my biggest <laughs> struggles? It might sound weird, but sports gets the worst of me sometimes. It really does. You know, and, um, and so, you know, a lot of you probably know last night. Those of you that don't, conference tournament last night, we were in the finals. I coach, for those of you that don't know. And, and when we ended up losing the game, and I wasn't real happy about that afterwards, you know. And I might have went home not being my best person. Really, really. But this is where my wife comes in and why I love her. Because she says, you, you know, it would have been great if you would have won. But do you really learn anything when you win? I wasn't, ex- I wasn't exactly in a place I wanted to hear, hear that last night. <laughs> I'm okay now, but <laughs> she did, she did, she did, but, but my thing is this, if, if I am coaching, what is the reason that I'm doing it? Is it just about the wins and losses, or is it about teaching life to these boys? You know, and, and what do you learn through it? You learn, um, you know, you learn to get along with others. You learn working together. You learn that sometimes things aren't fair, right? You learn that the, the unexpected can happen, and you don't know exactly how things are going to play out. Sometimes things are out of your control. Other people's decision can have a major impact on the outcome. Mistakes and failures will happen. And you can do everything right and prepare and still might not go your way. And so if my focus is not on the eternal things and teaching and learning... I might as well not be doing it, right? Because if ultimately if I care only how good of a basketball player that James is, I have missed it. Because what matters to me is his character, how he lives his life. If people can see him and see Jesus in him, And know him. His identity is not as a basketball player. It's not. And I don't want it to be. Do you understand that? And I know as players, as a coach of players, you probably don't always feel that. And I am sorry. But the man that you become in Christ Jesus is all that matters. And the things that we can learn through the things that we do, through the things that are going on, and what he wants to teach us is what's important. Because if we take our eyes off that and what he's trying to teach us and what he's trying to show us and who he wants us to be, all right, that's our Bathsheba. Amen? I tell my kids all the time, if going to school is just about you getting good grades and doing your homework, then you've missed it. You've missed it. Because that is blocking your view of what God has you there for and what you're doing. I might have one child that complains a little bit, might get a little frustrated with her teachers at times, and might cast a little blame on them for things that aren't going right. 
But if that's where her focus is going to be, if it's going to be on Bathsheba, it's totally missing what God has. Amen? And so, my focus, where's our focus? Gabrielle talked a little bit about that last week with our focus. And, you know, is my focus on the fact that I'm, I'm angry at somebody that might make a call in a game that I don't even know that his own, really his only reason for being there is to provide an opportunity so that these kids can enjoy something? He's not there to ruin my life. Right? <laughs> He's not. It's stupid. It's silly. And everybody's going to make mistakes. Okay, But if I'm going to sit there and point a finger and tell my team of how awful that was and you got cheated and this shouldn't have happened this way, what, what good is that, right? Because that's life. That's life. One of my best friend's wife is dying of cancer. Is that fair? No. Did she do anything to... to but cause that? No. But if our focus is going to be on that, we're missing him. And the fact that in all things, God wants to bring good. He wants to be glorified through all things, even when it's not going well. And it's not going to go well a lot of times. But that doesn't change the fact that if our focus is on him and say, okay, God, my wife taught me this one too. But she's always saying, she says, I'm not going to waste this hurt. I'm not going to waste this hurt. If our focus is on Bathsheba, we're going to waste the hurt. If our focus is on him, we won't. Amen? Did you want to add something? Hey, this is what happens when we're, if you guys have never been around when we share, we just kind of, I don't know what I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyway, all right, we'll move on. So, you know, hold the mic for me. I was going to go on to, to this. I'm going to intro. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we spent a lot of time preparing together. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so we're going from, in, in case you don't know, we're going from Christ in me to me in Christ. And I saw this the other day, and it really hit me. Um, in the beginning, in Genesis, you know, God created the heavens and the earth, da da da, da. And it, then it, it goes on to say, God looked at the land, and then he, um, he created plants, trees, vegetation, whatever. Um, and then he looked at the ocean, the water, and he created the fish and the creatures in the water. And then he looked, to, when he created us, where did he look? He looked at himself. Let us make man in our image, and, and then we were created. So what happens if you take um, a tree out of the ground? It dies. What happens if you take a fish out of the, out of the water? It dies. What happens if we take if we are out of God, we're not in God, we die. We die. Okay. Um, so now I want that you can go do your thing. You want to hold the mic? I do. I do. And get ready to drop it. No, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sometimes I feel like, um, like Sunday, and, and this is me. I'm not accusing anyone, but this is me. A lot of times... Uh, I look at Sunday morning as, and, and I come here and, um, you know, to get Jesus and, you know, to fill me up, just to try to absorb all that I can. This, this sponge isn't absorbing very good. <laughs> you get the point, though. And so, and then I'm, I'm going to just take it this week, and this is me. I'm filled up for the week. I'm going out. And it's like, you know, how long is that going to last? Right? How long is this going to last? Do you think this by, by next Sunday this sponge is going to still be wet or is it 
It's going to be all dried up, isn't it? And, um, and so I, I sometimes just the mentality of I, I just I'm going to church. I, I got to get my fill. I got to get my fix. And um, I really feel like I'm missing the point in that because this, this is the opportunity that we have to be together to encourage one another, right? To strengthen each other. What am I bringing to you, not what am I coming to just receive, right? Um, and I have to be, you know, to keep this sponge full, I need to stay connected. And, and it just kind of, the scripture that came to mind um, as was going about the week here was, was John 15. And probably one that you're all familiar with, but about the vine, vine and the branches, and it says, uh, John 15, 1 through 8, if you guys want to turn there. Hopefully I can read this. My, my, my Bible's getting smaller. I don't know what's going on. So I, It's got to be the lighting. But it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So he is the vine. If we are connected to the vine, all right, if our lifeblood comes from him being the vine, connected to the vine, what's it say? He says, then, then everything that bears no fruit, the things that are not fruitful in us, He's going to cut those off. They're going to fall away, right? Because we're connected to him, right? Because he is going to do that within us. Not something we're doing. Not, it's not because, oh, I'm going to choose. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. As soon as I get this out of my life, then I'm going to become. It's going to be him transforming us, right? And he's going to get rid of the bad junk. And it says, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that what? It's even more fruitful. So that the things he's placed within us, the fruit that's coming out of us, it's not just, it's not just, oh, okay, where it's at. He wants there to be even more fruit, right? He wants to prune us to be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I will also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Remain in him. You can bear no fruit without remaining in him, all right? We talk about the Bathsheba in our life, all right? Is it going to be our own doing that we can overcome those things? No, in no way. It's only by being connected to him, being in him, connected to the vine, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Right? Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Oh, the great genie God, right? No. It's about because we have connected to him, then what happens? His will becomes our will. And so what we ask is only coming from him right it's not our own desires it's not my magic genie god 
What's my wish this week, right? No, it's because we're connected to him. And so um, in 1 John 2.6, I'm going to read that to you. I wrote that bigger on my own paper. He says, this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Again, I'd say because of that connection, because of that connection, we will walk as Jesus did. It's not, it doesn't say, walk as Jesus did, then you can be connected to me. That's never going to happen. We can only walk as he did if we are in him connected, our lifeblood coming from him. Do you understand that? All right? And so instead... Um, She's used to muting me at home. Anyway, where was I? Oh, have you ever been around somebody that when you are with them, you just feel like you encounter God? Do you have any of those people in your life? All right. I, and, and... I would say there's one person. There's actually somebody else that even told me that this this week. And um, but Chris, I'm not trying. <laughs> Chris would tell you Chris is the most humble person I know. And this is not about saying how great Chris is, because just ask Melissa. He has flaws. Okay. But I can tell you this. I've spent enough time with Chris, and I've had a number of other people tell me this. I bet you Jason would tell you the same thing. When you are around Chris, you encounter God. All right? When I spend time around Jay, I encounter God. All right? We all have people like that. Then it's just when you're around them, you can't help. It's just, it's, it's not that they're even trying. They're not preaching at you. But it's just everything about them. You, you, you can't help but encounter the living God. All right? And that's what happens when we sub- submerse ourselves in him. Guess what? When we're around other people and they come near us, they can't help but being touched by him. Thank you. You see the picture? All right. Can I encourage you with that? It's not. And I don't want to come across point. We well, need to do more. You need to do more. You need to be like that. That's not what I'm saying. The only thing I'm saying is that as we press into him, as we are in his word, as we let him consume every part of our being, this will happen naturally. Because it's nothing that we do. It's not taking this step, this step, this step, and this step. It's just about seeking him, reading his word, talking to him, spending time listening to him. Things that, you know what, are not easy. I'll be the first to admit. You know, 
Those things are not easy. And guess what? Satan knows that. So you know what's going to happen? He's going to place that Bathsheba in front of you. Whatever that is in your life. Anything to keep you from drawing near to him. Because the last thing he wants is for people to encounter Jesus when they are with you. Um, so I really like visual aids, obviously. We always, it's how I learn visually. Um, so just a couple more things. You know, we, ju we just said, you know, ab he will abide in us if we abide in him. And so just a visual aid of that with the vine and the branches is, and we, we already talked about it, but I just like looking at it as well. Like, you can't get an apple without the tree. Can you have the tree without the apple? But we can't have the apple. So we can't do what God necessarily wants us to do without him. Without him, we're useless. We can't um, produce. And then I like, I like these sponges better. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, but the other thing is, um, even, even if I choose to be submersed in God, I'm choosing to be submersed. And that's great. But what do we do with sponges to get them really good? You squeeze them. And that's what we were talking about, like not wasting the hurt. When you're going through something, you're getting squeezed. Where do you want to go? In. And then you will, don't waste it. Don't waste that hurt. Absorb as much of God as you can in that time. And then you won't look back at that time and think, well, that was just a really cruddy time in my life. It'll be, I don't want to go through that again, but I'm glad that I did because this was the, this was the, um, conclusion this was the this is what happened and I'm better for it so um thank you the other thing sorry I just randomly always have things. the other thing is my kids like really love swimming especially the younger they are they love it like how many kids do you know even like where we live you know the soonest they can get there like it's like 65 degrees and they're like I'm going and the water is like horrible and you're like are you joking are you kidding me no but actually when I was a kid I did the same thing when I was a kid I was like you didn't even feel the cold it's like you didn't even care because it was all about the fun it was all about just being in the ex the experience and now as an adult it's just like um I'm gonna sit and watch you I'm gonna sit by I'm gonna put my toes in because it's uncomfortable and I'm sorry but we do the same thing we do the same thing with with God. It's like, ah, I'm I'm just gonna put my I'm just gonna put a little of myself in there. I'm not gonna go all the way. I'm not gonna get crazy. <laughs> I'll be by the pool. I'll be by God, but I'm not gonna dive totally in. I mean, that would be that it might hurt. It might be hard. Um so last week too, we also uh, so I'm sorry, I feel like I'm stealing everything that Pastor Gabrielle said, and I'm just like saying it in a different way. But it's cool. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, so last week, we also talked about um, building our house on the sand or building our house on the rock. Will you read that for me? I got it. I got it marked. Weakest, I believe, and smallest. <laughs> it's right here. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Okay, so I'm not going to say that I don't have God in my life like every, like I do, I do. But what I do is I don't necessarily build my house on the rock. I, I take this little rock with me and I try to build 
a house with this rock in this sand. Does that make sense? Like, I take God with me, I think, but I'm not submersed. Like, I try to take him with me, and I'm like, it's cool. Like, I'm doing, and I might be doing great things. I, I think my job is, is good. I think I do a pretty good job sometimes with my children. Like, so I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I got God with me. I got the, but I'm not, sometimes I try to just do good things, and I don't, I'm not submersed. I'm not, like, willing to just be like, nope. Whatever you, whatever you want, I'm going with you. I'm following you. It's, this is kind of what I want. This is kind of what I see as good. So, and, but you're good too. So I'm going to bring you, and I'm going to tap into that sometimes, but I'm good because this is what I see as good. Instead of, I don't know anything, I'm going with you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Another thing Pastor Gabriel said, God's presence is his kingdom. We talk, we talk about God's kingdom a lot. And I, I, growing up, I'd be like, I, I want to be there. I want to do that. But where is that? Like, just get, buy my ticket. I want to go. Um, so, but God's presence, God's presence. So I can tap into that wherever I am, wherever I go, I can be a part of his kingdom. And that's where I was created. That's what it says. I was created in his image. I was created in his presence. Um, and we're ambassadors for his kingdom. And what, what's an ambassador? Ambassador is one who is sent by a country or a kingdom as a representative in a foreign nation. Um, so, so um, Dave, can I go to the next slide and see if, it, see if it'll play? Okay, so this is last week. It, it's actually a video if it goes, but if it doesn't go, it's fine. Don't concentrate on what he's saying, even though I'm sure it's, like, fantastic. Watch him, he said, I follow him. She's mimicking him. Her, her, his hand motions. We can't, a lot of us, I shouldn't say all of us, a lot of us maybe can't understand Pastor Gabrielle, but she's right there interpreting for him. She is his ambassador. She resides here with us, but she is from his house, from her father's house. And that's how we should be as well. It should be this thing of, I'm just, I'm going with you. I'm following you. I'm going to do my best to mimic you. And this isn't, this isn't my home. I come from his kingdom, his presence. This is where I reside. But I come from your house. Um, we have a sign that I, I made at our house. And I, I don't know. I just felt like when I, my toughest time in life, I made it. Um, and it's, it says, home sweet temporary home. With the cross being the T. Because this isn't, yeah, I love my house, and I love couts. I love my community a lot. But this isn't, this is just where I reside. This isn't my home. Um, and so, and I'm an, I want to be an ambassador for him. And when I as, I, as I grow older, I want that to be my identity. I think a lot of times we get confused with, like, this is my culture, or, and this is my, I'm, my identity is I'm a daughter of Christ. My culture is honestly, a lot of sports. It's a lot of my job. It's, it's community. It's all good things. But when I'm, like, when I'm gone, I don't want to re be remembered for my culture. I want to be remembered for my identity. Okay. Um... Okay. Did you have anything? Can you hold this for me? Too, and it really, it really stuck with me. Can you move this? I don't need this in my way anymore. Um, so, did you know that when you're born, like you're like, um, I should just read it to you instead of trying to explain it. Good gracious. Okay. Neurologists say that when we are born, we are looking for someone who is looking for us. It's a beautiful way to describe what happens when the gaze of a baby meets the gaze of a mother. Um, it suggests that that moment is staggering and it stays with us 
through life. In that moment, two brains are changed. They change each other. No matter the trauma of birth, the first look, both of them feel the same. Here is the one I have been looking for. And in that gaze, the world will be okay. And it's an awe-inspiring moment that we really never get over. I would suggest that we actually go through this throughout life. That moment repeats. Almost every morning it repeats, that pattern. We wake up new in, into the world, and each morning we wake up, and we're looking for someone who is looking for us. We are hungry for a gaze of someone who loves us. We will look for it everywhere and anywhere, trying to find something to fill that God-shaped, God-sized hole in our hearts. And I, so I, I read that here, and then I saw it in like two other places as well. Um, so uh, can we go to the next slide? Hopefully. Okay. So <laughs> this, of course, made me think of my kids. And uh, I mean, they all did this, but I actually got this one on camera. So this is Ellie waking up from a nap. Hopefully. The Hello. So it's really faint. You can barely, but she's, hello, like, come get me. Hello. And so then go to the next slide, Dave. And this is the face we would find. Just waiting, waiting for us. And then go, to, go ahead and go to the next slide. And this is all that she wanted. This is what she wanted, to find the one that is looking for us. And I feel like mothers and fathers, like, t like they, we, we can be just like a representative of really what God created. God is who we should be looking for every morning. Um, so anyway, like I said, uh, I, I, I read this in a couple different spots, but I wanted to, to read this one as well. Um, we are all born with eyes darting, searching for eyes that are looking for ours, searching for a gaze that lights up when it meets our own. At the heart of our earthly desire is a spiritual one. The mother's eyes and the father's gaze are reflections of our heavenly fathers. The one who says, do you see me? I see you. Um, I mean, you know, like peekaboo, you know how that works on like every single baby? They love it because that's their goal at that point in life is I want to find the one that's looking for me. So it's like peek, peek, oh, I found you. I'm looking. I found you. Anyway. Um, we are all born looking for someone who is looking for us, and somewhere along the way, we believe that we must earn that gaze. As we grow up, we, we believe that we must earn it, um, not just from our Heavenly Father, but from the world. So our eyes dart and dart and dart. Will you love me? And how about you? And what tricks must I do? What hoops must I jump through? We control and manipulate and perform and beg. Do you see me now? Are you looking for me now? When we discover that we can't hold the world's gaze, we build up walls of self-protection and we put up signs in front of our heart that say, no entry beyond this point. We guard and we say that we're fine because to say anything else is too risky. Love is given to a point and love is received to a point. We are all born looking for someone who is looking for us, but the desire can be dulled. We wouldn't want to be anything or we want to have self-protection and say we're not we don't fully trust anyone with our heart how rare is it to see someone completely open to give and receive love whose own gaze and need for another's hasn't been tarnished by disappointment can you think of anyone okay so dave can we play the next one this is a so there's an 88-year-old father, and maybe you've seen this. I think it went, like, viral or whatever, but he's reunited with his 53-year-old 50 year son. After being a week apart, he went to go uh, see the Yankees play, and his dad couldn't go. And anyway, he has Down syndrome, and this is his reaction coming home. He hasn't seen his father in a week.
Okay, I know you probably couldn't hear that, but uh, did you see how he tore down the escalator? And then he's like kissing him beyond belief, like didn't care about what anybody thought, didn't care about anything but getting to his father and being submersed in that love. Um, and then his conversation, which I, you might not have been able to hear, but his father, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? And he says something, and then he says, I was looking for you. He was looking, for, I'm look, I was looking for you. Because at this point, he doesn't care about anything. He doesn't care if he had a good time. He doesn't care about anything. He cares about, he found his father, the one he had been looking for, the one who's looking for him, and immerse himself in that love. And how amazing God gives us that opportunity to do that with him. And it's our choice to run down the escalator and get there. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to show you another, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I've showed, I think I've showed this like three times, but oh well. Um, so this is from The Chosen, and it's like my favorite part ever. And um, this is where Jesus is picking his disciples and um, the, the one with the fish. Well, you'll see. Let's just play it. <laughs>
looking at the one that you've been looking for, looking for the one. In Luke, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but is this story, and it talks about how they immediately left, and they, they pulled up their boats, and they just left everything. They left the fish. They left the boat. So this we have this picture at our house. We, ha- we have that. Um, because a lot of times I think what I do is instead of immediately going and just, okay, I'm, I'm following you, I would be like, uh, <laughs> Jesus, this is amazing. Let's start a ministry that feeds the poor with these fish. And we could just, you come with me. You come with me. And we'll do it. And it'll be awesome. That's, that's, I do that all the time. And instead of, no, that's, because that's what I see as good. I'm like, okay, this is, this would be, this would be good. And really, the only good thing I can do in life is to follow him. The, my greatest ability is my availability to God, period. It doesn't matter what I'm doing or what my skills are or whatever, because all that is garbage if I'm not doing it with him, if, I, if I'm not going with him. If it's just my own thing, it's just it's useless. Um, okay, so then the next one... Um, it's like two different, so I want you to see. So this is Peter's reaction, and this is Peter. This is, this is who I've been, who, like, at the beginning, he was like, I'm doing it myself. Like, we've been doing this all night. It's not working. Like, that's, that's been me. And then, and then I, find, I find God looking for me, and I, I look up at him. This is a totally different, but, but similar. This is Mary Magdalene. She is lost, just lost. And God's still looking for her, too. And so this is her reaction when she finds the one that is looking for her. Even when we run away, he's, he's coming for us.
and I've been that person too. I've been Peter, and I've been Mary. Um, right now in the world, life isn't normal. We've, we all we keep hearing that, like, I just want to get back to normal. I just want to get back to normal. And the thing is, normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. And are we telling our kids? Are we telling the next generation? Um, something I've been trying to tell my kids is, like, I can, I can teach you a lot of things, whatever, like how to cook or how to whatever, play basketball or whatever. I can, do, I can teach you a lot of things, but it's all worthless if you don't know how to hear from God and you don't have that life skill to be able to tap in and dive in here. It's the only thing you need. What is the only thing that can't be taken away from you? It's the only thing. Everything else. You can lose your job. You can lose your family. You can lose your food, for goodness sakes. You can lose all of it, but you can never, no one can take Jesus from you. And if you don't know how to dive in here, then you need to learn. And and there, I would love to talk to you. I would. There's so many of us that would love to talk to you. And it's okay to not know. It's okay. We're still learning. I'm still learning. But don't just be, don't settle and just be like, well, that's just not, that's just not for me. I mean, can you imagine if I told you like, yeah, eating, that's just not for me. Drinking water, I'm over it. I'm just not going to do it anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like those, you would be like, do you want to die? Like, <laughs> are you, is that something you're, you want to do? No, no. This is the most important life skill that, that you can have. Um, so, uh, last night I just really felt like this was supposed to be a family thing. And so we, we came together and we all prayed to see like, okay, God, we want, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you as a family, as a family. And so, um, Jesse has, he wanted to share something too. So uh, like my mom was saying last night, we were praying and I asked God for um, a picture. And the picture I got was a pencil. Um, and I would definitely say that a pencil is used in our everyday lives. A pencil is only good if it is used though. If I were to never use this pencil, it would be useless. This pencil would have no meaning without someone using it. This pencil is just like us. Without God, we are useless. I think that everyone here can agree with that. I also have something else, something else to share. Um, my family and I have also been talking about what our identity is. Um, and sometimes our identity is what it shouldn't be. Um, and those things are irrelevant. Uh, what our identity should always be is I'm a son of God or a daughter of God. Um, Anna was also uh, praying last night, and she just kept getting a picture of, like, a braid, like a braid in her hair, um, and we didn't know what that meant. And so, okay, we're going to keep praying about it. This, is, this, isn't, this isn't a test, okay? We're just, we're trying. We're practicing with our kids. We're, we're walking through it. And today, during worship, I was still praying about it because I want to know, you know, I want to know if God is speaking. I, I want my kids to hear it. I want them to know that they, they heard it. I don't want it to be a question like, hmm. I want it to, no, you got to, you practice it and you know it. It's a muscle memory. Like, yep, yep, that was God. That was God. So during worship, I felt like God said what that braid was. And it was, you know, every day, especially Ellie, <laughs> Um, Ellie, she'll get her hair braided and then she'll, you know, she'll sleep on it. And then in the morning, what does it look like? Ugh. Like it's, it's all over the place. And so I have to rebraid it. And so every day we're braiding God into our lives. So it's an everyday thing. And it's, it's a part of every part of our life, every strand. It's, it's around it. 
It's, it shouldn't be this separate thing. It shouldn't be, well, I do the God thing on Sunday. It should be an everyday, like, he's, he's with me at my job. He's with me when I'm at the store. He's with me when I'm driving. I'm, I'm um, braiding him into my, into my life. So you did hear from God, and it's, and it's amazing. Because we don't, like, throughout history before Jesus, they didn't have that privilege. We have this privilege to tap in to God's presence and be able to talk to him. And that's amazing. And to say, you know, if, if you talk to someone, like, you know, before Jesus, I'm sure they would be like, are you serious? You get to do that every day and you don't do it? What? So tap in to this amazing power, this amazing strength that God has given us. Um, so did you want to add anything? Or I'm done. I'm going to go to my last thing. So before we close with this last video and song, the challenge this morning, what I hope that we can take away is the fact of um, God wants to be intimate with each and every one of you, right? He loves us. He's looking for us. And he's who we've always been looking for, even though a lot of times our focus is somewhere else, Right? But if we can tap into him, totally submerse ourselves in him, instead of being like, okay, God, I've, I've got my Sunday morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you with me here, okay? It's more about if we can look at it as if we're submersed in him, we are going with him wherever he wants to take us. You know? And... And I know it's one of those things like, oh, I know there's people here thinking like, I, I, just don't, I just don't hear God like that. I just, I just don't feel that. All I can tell you is this. I do know that the more time you spend reading his word, the more time you spend talking to him, the more you will believe and know that he wants that intimacy with you. Okay, and um, and please, I'm not trying to. I, I don't want to point fingers saying you're not doing enough or whatever because it's not by what we do, but the thing that we do is we seek Him, right? It's not about this list of things that we do to go about it. Oh, I read the Bible this long. I prayed this long. So I'm good, you know, and 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 don't think because I, I don't I don't feel like I'm as intimate with that guy as as, as I want to be. I, I hope none of us are as intimate with him as we want to be, right? Because what's it say? It says that you know the fruit he's going to trim what's fruitful to make it more fruitful. There's always more of him right there's always more to know of him and so i hope we can be challenged as as we as we move forward we talk about life in the other six is kind of the theme for the year and and what that means is you know outside of sunday the rest of the week what does our life look like what's our heart's desire What are we pressing into? Where is our focus? What is interfering? What is our Bathsheba interfering with our eyesight being on him and where he has us? Do you want to play the... Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to end with a song. I honestly don't know like how loud it will be because it's playing off my uh, computer, but you can, you can read the words and you might have heard the song or not. It's just, I feel like it's really been like, it's our family anthem right now um and so just honestly i i'm challenging you to step into his kingdom step into his presence right now before you leave don't wait that's what i always tell my kids too i'm like well i'll pray about that no no no, no. just do it right now like just tap into it right now don't use this time we've got like it's gonna be like five minutes five minutes of tapping into his kingdom trying to immerse yourself in his presence and let let 
this song touch you, okay?
So this song, I love it for many different reasons. But one of my favorite lines is, look at what God has done. But how can we see what God has done if we're not looking for him, if we're not looking at him, if we're not telling our kids to look for him? Um, sing it to the nation, sing it to the sons, sing it to the daughters. That's, that's my, my only life goal at this point. That's it. It's the only thing that matters. Um, this is, this is ac- just kind of funny, but um, over Christmas, my kids were like, uh, hey, Mom, you know, we got to go see that new Spider-Man movie. We got to see it. We got to see it. And I'm like, okay, okay. Um, and I had seen all of the Spider-Man movies. Um, I am a bit of a Marvel fanatic. Um, and they had n- I knew they had not seen all of the Spider-Mans. Um, and I knew what was potentially coming in the next one, which I'm not going to spoil it because I'm not that kind of person. But um, they were like, we got to go, right? Like the very first day of Christmas break, we got to go, we got to go. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. We're going to like, we're going to take one night a week or one night a day, like each night of Christmas break, and we're going to watch one of these movies and then we'll go. And so that's what, they, that's what we did. And was it a good idea? Yes. Why? Because the, of the satisfaction of you, you got to see everything come together. And then when it, when it all came together, you were like, oh, yes. So the point is, I don't want you to miss what God has. And I don't want it, I don't want it to be like, could, could I go see the Spider-Man movie right now without watching them? Sure. Would I get the satisfaction of seeing what God has done? Would I be able to come out and be like, Japheth, my gosh, did you, oh, I can't believe that happened. It was amazing. Like, no, because I would just be like, that's, that was cool. That was cool. No, but when you see all of it come together, it's like, yes. And I want that for everyone. I want that for my kids. I want that for you. I want you to be able to bring that all together and be like, look, look at what God has done. Look at the one who has been looking for me and the one I've been looking for and look at what he has done. Why don't you stand with me? Yeah. I just wanted to share. I thank you guys for, like, always bringing out visualizations because I learn better that way. I take more with me that way. So what I got out of this is our life is the air. We are the sponge, and God is the water. So if you pay attention every time you put the sponge to resaturate, it put, mix the air in with the water. Well, then the water drove the air out, which is our, everything we had going on in life and became back to pure water. But then again, if you take that same water and you mix it with sand and, sand and you mix it with that stone, that's what makes concrete, and concrete makes the foundation. So even with the apple, out of everything, you take water, which is God, away from any of it, and you have nothing. Thank you. Okay, we're talking about, um, you know, bringing God out into the, the week and, and suffusing our lives with him every day. And uh, I got to say, last week I was, I was a little busy with the drinks, but I saw every other slide with uh, Gabrielle's message, Pastor Gabrielle, was focus. And I was floored when I saw that because not a day prior, a fr- uh, someone who's a very spiritual friend of me spoke that over me. And... We're talking about focus, talking about suffusing, submerging ourselves in God. One of the things that everyone needs to get through our heads, this is direct, you cannot multitask. If you're telling yourself you're doing two things well, you're lying to yourself. And that's also part of the nature of God because there is no past for him. There is no present. He is in every moment present standing just out of arm's reach behind your door and only you have the knob so focus is the word of the season whenever you go out wherever you're whatever you're doing whatever is at hand a way to be godlike 
is to cut off all the things around you and simply pursue the task in front of you. Because uh, as long as you're um, getting in the word and listening to him, he'll send you where he wants you to go. So whatever thing is on your plate, only be in that moment. Because there is no outside moments for God. There's no distractions for God. He's right there waiting at everyone's door, ready to give you his love and his power and his wisdom and all the other goodness. Sure. Uh, so. <laughs> so I was thinking like the whole time what Jess said, have you ever seen like someone that like you see God in? And I was like thinking of a bunch of people that I have seen it in. But I would like to thank one person. I would like to thank Miss Overholt because I fully remember first time of going to youth group. And our lesson was uh, our like big thing to do for the week was to speak to God. And I had the question of how do I do that? I don't know how to. I never have done it. I'm in sixth grade at this point. It was like two years ago. And she says she will pray for me. And I tried all week. I was like, I need to speak to God because of her. So I always, I always think of ways to do it. And I really would like to thank her for that because she just opened my eyes up to so many new things. Roger, did you have something you want to share? That's what God kind of does with us. He clothes us. He, he takes care of us the whole time, you know, no matter what, you know, the schemes that we're going through and stuff like that. So it's a, just a visual. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Roger. Okay, I'm just going to go off your heels. And this is just, in it. I, I want us as a body to see something in Jeff and Andrea today, okay? Their week last week was crazy. Is that a good word for it? Okay, a great word for it. Because Andrea is super involved with the PCC. Jeff, obviously, coaches and all that. I'm not trying to pat you on the back, although you did a good job today. But what I want us as a body to see is that I'm sure there was weakness in them this morning, okay? Tired, lost the game, you know, frustrations, at the school late, cleaning up, all that stuff. But God says in his word, when you are weak, he is strong. And that's the whole, the whole thing I was thinking about today is the anointing that was falling. I, did you feel it? Did you feel God's anointing falling? That's because... When we are weak, he is strong. And it's just another reason that we need to be in the pool, in the pool, because we're all going to have weak moments. That's when he shines. No, and that is true. It is only by his grace, because I can tell you last night when I got home, all I kept saying is, why did we agree to speak this week? Why are we doing this? It was supposed to be last week. <laughs> And so why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And I, I, you know, obviously we had a lot to put together. And, and you know, the Lord, we, we prayed. Andrea sat us down. She's like, we just need to pray as a family. And that's what we did. And attitude starts to change a little bit. And you start to get perspective. And God speaks. And until we sit down and allow him to speak, 
we're not, if we're not listening, he's, he's not going to speak, right? And so, anyway, but by God's grace, um, thank you. I'm thankful that, that he, he desires to use each one of us. He does. And that's, and that's what we see this morning. This is what Sunday morning is about, I think. You know, as we come together and, and, and we can share together things that God is laying on our hearts and, and, and what he speaks to us through the, through the morning. It's not about us just being up here and, and trying to fill your sponge, right? It's bigger than that. It's all of us together as a family um, in it together. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for, for who you are. I thank you for the deep desire that you have, that you're always, you've always been looking for us. And you created us because you wanted a family. And Father, I just pray that, that, that we would be looking to you, Father, that, that as those Bathshebas come in our way, Father, that we can look past that and, and we can look to you. And, and whatever that is and the struggles and, and, the, and the trials and the hurts and whatever's going on, that, that we can know and rest in, in that you um, are in it. And Father, I just pray that you wouldn't waste any of those hurts. Father, I know you want to bring good, you want to bring glorify, be glorified in every situation, as bad as it might be, and we're in the midst of it, Father, I just pray that we can submerse ourselves in you and seeing and understanding what it means to be in you, fully embraced by you. And then as we encounter others, uh, then, then they would also encounter you because they would have to because we are fully engulfed in who you are. So, Father, I just pray for each one as we go from here. Everyone's got things going on this week, and you know every detail. And so, Father, I just pray that your hand would be upon each person here. Father, each struggle. Father, through work. Just through life in general. Father, that we can rest assured and that you are there. You are there when we're crying out. And we thank you for that. In your name, amen.